I'm a, a gynecologist by training, and then I actually uh, got into bariatrics uh, via uh, diabetes research. We started to look uh, at diabetes and formed a, a, a company and you know, clinical research organization. Through that, we worked with several biotech companies that were developing monoclonal antibodies for type 1 diabetics that uh, bound to the antibodies which were attacking the beta cells. And through that, we started looking at type 2 diabetes, and we were able to really have a profound effect on type 2 diabetics with weight loss. So the next step was to start looking at the different methods of weight loss and, and to see which was the most effective way to lose weight to try, try and control the uh, epidemic of type 2 diabetes. So that's how I kind of got into this field. And then I was asked to kind of look at HCG and, and see what kind of evidence-based uh, studies we have or evidence-based medicine we have to explain the anecdotal type of findings that a lot of uh, practitioners are, are seeing when using uh, HCG. No disclosures. All right, well, obviously the obesity epidemic is well talked about, 200 million Americans. It's uh, going to become 2.3 billion by the year 2015. You saw this in the last presentation, but it seems like Colorado is the only state that is uh, staying somewhat healthy. No question about the increased health risk factors with uh, increased weight. And what is the food industry's role in this? Uh, Dr. Kessler, who uh, used to head up the FDA, wrote a book uh, recently, and he kind of equates the food industry's uh, effect on the obesity epidemic uh, to what nicotine uh, did with uh, smoking and that fructose um, is a, a toxin, just like nicotine, and he feels that until the government actually intervenes and demonizes fructose, um, we really aren't going to see uh, a real improvement in the obesity epidemic, because the food industry is putting this in just about every product that kids eat. And unfortunately, you know, we are seeing type 2 diabetes in uh, six-year-olds, and you know the statement's been made, and now Michelle Obama is on the bandwagon. But the statement has been made that this is the first generation of kids that aren't going to live as long as their parents, because we don't really know what happens to a type two diabetic when they contract it at age six. But obviously, it's a it's a huge issue. We also have the problem of all the the a lot of the meats we eat, the all of the animals have been grazing and ingesting uh, hormones and antibiotics. You know, same thing with fructose. The industry tries to make something quicker, sweeter, faster, and now they're trying to make the animals, you know, fatter sooner so they can be slaughtered. All right, well, it was Dr. Simeon who first uh, started looking at ACG uh, with, with diets, and he, you know, he was a, a well-respected physician back in, in, in the 1900s. The Daniel uh, Belusio has the other uh, large experience, um, and he has treated over 20,000 patients. He uses uh, oral HCG. And you know, one of my concerns uh, when looking at injectable versus oral versus transdermal is you know, what type of plasma level uh, do we get, and what type of plasma level do you need uh, for for results? So the Simeon uh, hypothesis was that obesity is poorly understood, uh, probably due to a neuropeptide concentration imbalance, and we keep talking about the hypothalamus, which is you know where the satiety and feeding centers are. Adipose tissue metabolism of obese individuals behaves differently 
um, than normal, um, and we have talked about the different types of fat. So in the you know, hypothalamus, uh, that you know, regulates the endocrine system, and then obviously that is uh, critical to, to weight loss and to uh, controlling appetite. Now, we, we know from uh, experiments that if you destroy the uh, ventromedial um, nucleus in the hypothalamus, that you have essentially destroyed the satiety center. The lateral hypothalamus controls feeding and the medial controls uh, satiety. So the rats in these experiments um, became obese. So we know that uh, the control is there. So what about uh, HCG? Um, it's a glycoprotein, as you've heard, and it has two units, the alpha and the beta. The alpha unit is identical to LH, FSH, and, uh, and TSH. It's the beta unit that's the unique uh, 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 unit on, on this uh, glycoprotein containing 145 amino acids. So the question is, why not use LH uh, for the same effect as has anyone tried weight loss with, uh, with LH. And uh, the problem with LH is that it has a much shorter half-life. Um, the beta unit on HCG is what gives it the, the longer half-life. Um, we've also looked at what happens with split dosing. And LH is much more expensive because it's not readily available. So HCG, you know, prominent in pregnant females, obviously it's made in the uh, placenta. Uh, and uh, the, the you know, question on is, does it increase uh, metabolism and what happens to stored fat calories are released? Does it, re does it release, can we look at a mechanism where it actually can explain that we are burning fat because we have HCG on board? We talked about the, the different uh, types of fat. So what, what, where is the mechanism of action of HCG? And it's felt, or it's theorized that it's in two locations. It's central in the hypothalamus, and if we can get the uh, endorphin effect, which um, anecdotally people have described when they're on the HCG diet, that they have a better sense of well-being, um, then we have to assume that it's acting at the, probably at the, at the uh, lateral um, hypothalamus. Um, and does it, you know, secrete uh, fat mobilizing substance or does it affect uh, HSL, hormone sensitive lipase? Uh, 